Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I finally get a chance to go towing with my new 2023 Chevy Silverado. This is a 3-liter diesel, the LZ0 inline 6 diesel. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and do a 50-mile towing loop. I have a 7,000-pound uh, gross weight camper. I'll get some specs on the screen, and we'll, we'll do some footage of all this kind of stuff. This 2023 is a crew cab, high country. I got 10-speed automatic transmission. I have max towing package, plus I have four low. Watch the videos. I can explain what that's going on. I have a Banks iDash as well. I'm going to tell you about the regen. Hopefully, I'm going to hit regen in this video, and hopefully, I'm not going to get too hot. It's getting hot in the cabin. But I just got fuel. I came back, just hooked up. I'll show you where the oil is currently. I'll show you what, how much squat we have. I'll do the 50 mile loop. We'll fill up again. We'll try to get as best numbers we can. Diesel fuel foams a little bit. Sometimes the numbers are a little off, but we'll do the best we can with that. I'll use two cameras. I'll give you transmission temperatures. I'll do that kind of stuff. And I also have a auxiliary transmission cooler on this truck. Plus I have a new one from PPE. It's supposed to be even better. So we'll hopefully put that on today or tomorrow and do a similar test with that and show you those numbers too. So let's go ahead and start this baby up because well, I'm getting hot. <laughs> so speaking of being hot, this winter has been absolutely terrible as far as <laughs> absolutely terrible as far as cold weather. It's just been nasty. And so I finally got warm temperatures to do this test. I'm waiting for a few months to do this test because of that situation. And so, yeah, I'm excited to get this truck going, do the test and see what we end up with. So let's go ahead and uh, start it up. We're going to get on the road and I'll go ahead and talk to you about going on. So, you know, right now, I'll kind of put it on the screen. Right now I have the trip odometer is at zero, but I, the trip, I just, I just got 2.4 miles of the gas station. So that's why you're showing 2.4 and a fuel stop. I have the transmission temperatures there on the left-hand side. Over here on the Banks I-Dash, I have the DPF, how much it has in it, whether regen is on or off. And then this is the engine temperature. It'll be interesting to show that as well. So right now 13.2 and I'm idling. Let's go ahead and get on the road and boogie. So the, the route I'm taking will take us over, uh, we're going to do about, I'll probably do about 60, 65 miles an hour. Um, I don't like to go really fast when I go towing because I'm never in a hurry. Um, I've done some towing tests, 55 as well. I don't know, it's just kind of whatever you feel like you, that day. We have a little wind today, so I'm a little more optimistic I can get that speed. If we go 3,000 feet where I'm at now, we go up maybe, I think Wildcat Hills is 1,000 feet. We go down 1,000 feet. We go up and down a little bit like this. I'm in Nebraska, and part of Nebraska is not as flat as you think it is, and TV and stuff like that. So we have some little rolling hills, uh, two lane highway with four lanes with the other lanes. So it's gonna be nice, people can pass me, I'm not gonna worry about that. I am really curious what we're going to get for fuel economy and we're going to get for the transmission temperature because I did the same test with a very similar camper with the LM2. I brought my cousin's camper, so thank you to the cousins who are watching this video. And I did a video with their camper and they just upgraded to a little bit longer camper, but it's about the same weight. So let's uh, attempt to turn it around here. <laughs> I don't tow as often as I want to and uh, I just got to always remember that, you know, my tips for towing are always take it slow, don't ever be in a hurry and always go wide in your turns because you have a lot of more length behind you. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera, get this uh, turning going, and then we'll head on down the road and we'll see where we end up here. I'll give you an update as we get towards Wildcat Hills. So I'm gonna clean this oil off. We're gonna check and see if I'm gonna use any oil this towing job. I doubt I'm gonna use anything. I'm not driving very far, but as you know, I've done videos on the video uh, oil consumption that is normal on GM diesels. And uh, it's interesting because a lot of debate on engines and oil usage. And I've talked to different people and talked to mechanics, stuff like that. And they're all like, engines use a little bit of oil. It's, you're just going to use a little bit to get it past the cylinders. The, this going down here, blow by, different things going on. I guess not blow by, but different things going on in the engine. You're going to have a little bit of oil usage. So I'm going to go ahead and put it back in. Now, I do understand by saying that I'm gonna start a fire in the comments, so feel free to comment about your experiences. But this sucker looks really full, and so what I thought I'd do was get a tape measure and do the best I can to show you on camera. So there's, it is, looks like he's in pass full. And so I have, oh, uh, I have say a quarter inch from the top that is full of oil. So, quite a bit of oil there, okay? So let's see 
how much we use after we're done towing. And for those wondering, because you probably are, this truck sat all night. I didn't drive it at all. It's been sitting all night. It's on level ground. Uh, it's interesting. The owner's manual says, let it sit for like a couple hours. And then the TSB I, did, I reported on, Technical Service Bulletin, about normal oil consumption said, let it sit 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go the 15 minute route. So I'm gonna sit a couple hours tonight, wait for it after we're done towing. And we'll see what it looks like when we come back. Okay, a popular topic when hooking up a truck to a camper is how much squat you're to get. How much is that rear suspension going to compress when you add the tongue weight, which is the camper weight, to the ball hitch and makes this truck go lower? Some people freak out about it. They put airbags in, all sorts of stuff because they want zero squat. Other people are like, hey, it goes down inches, so it's fine. Other people are like balling, they're running around like this, you can't see the headlights in the air because they've squatted so much. So it's kind of an interesting topic. And like I said, everybody kind of freaks out about it, but it, it doesn't have to be so hard. I would say anywhere from an inch to two inches is probably pretty normal when I've done these tests before. So I'm going to handy dandy tape measure here. And I'm going to eyeball the top of the truck here is at 50. Let's go right there. 50. Let's say 55 and 7 eighths or call it 56 just for good measure. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this hitch on to our weight distributing hitch and we'll see how much we drop. So we said 56. I expect to be about 54, 55. It's probably about right. Okay, so now the game is to line this thing up right. <laughs> um, I don't know. So it hops on. Oh, May got lucky. May got lucky. Yeah, we got it on right. Okay, so this is a good time to tell you that uh, Ford's got a new feature called Backup Hitch Assist. The truck will figure out where your ball is and where the receiver is, and by the push of a button, it'll back up for you. That's nice for guys like me. This is my third time. Third time backing it up. We said 56, but I think this squatted quite a bit, actually. So let's see what we got. I have uh, 53 and a quarter. So we squatted a little bit more than I thought was normal. I had to go back in time and watch all my other videos to figure out what I have for squat. But so we have about three inches of squat there. So that's where in cases people would say, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit low back here. That's where an airbag would help or air suspension would help. Okay, let's check out this rig. I've, this is actually post the towing test, by the way. So I pulled over after I'm done. I just want to show you guys the interior. And then we have the trailer mode here, which is a button right here. And it brings me in here. I can name the trailer. I can do light testing. I can check, I can put auxiliary cameras on there. I can go through a checklist. I can, there's a gross combined weight alert, which is kind of an interesting thing. I'll tell you more about that right about now. <laughs> I was talking to the engineering about that and they actually said what the deal was, was they have a calculation that figures out if the engine is really struggling, the truck seems like it's struggling, then the alert will tell you you are over your gross combined weight alert. Gross combined means the weight of the truck and the camper together. What's the gross combined weight rating? So what's cool with GM, uh, GM vehicles is they put that here in a sticker. Let's go check that out. Okay. Like I said, this is the high country. So I do have the wood trim. I do have the Bose speaker there. The reason I went with high country was more comfortable seats in high country. Plus I have four wheel drive low and I have tow haul mode. I know. It's my personal theory that the higher trim levels of GM vehicles, the seats are more comfortable. That's my theory. All right, over here is a sticker that shows you the gross combined weight rating is 19,000 pounds. The gross vehicle weight rating is 7,300 pounds. We have a curb weight of 5668 pounds. Max payload of 1632. Conventional trailer pulling 13,000 pounds. Max tongue weight 1300 pounds. Gross goose, gooseneck trailer weight 8400 pounds. Max tongue weight for 1260 pounds for the gooseneck. I have tire information, I have a VIN number, and I have tire load information as well. So, let's check this out. There we go. We have the Silverado there. I have some steps on this as well. High Country badging there. There's your Duramax label there. Here's your High Country in the front, and I swear I clean this. We're getting some bugs now. Get warm. Here comes the bugs. Oh, and that's the uh, Scotts Bluff National Monument. It's actually a national park. Uh, so we have truck there. You can kind of see the squat. I'll back up a little bit, not too much traffic here today, but you can kind of see that squat. 
it's not that bad. I mean, it you know just depends on your personal preference. Uh, there is our trailer sway control, or excuse me, trailer just reading just reading hitch <laughs> hookup. There's our hitch hookup. Boy, I can't talk today. Uh, we have the Chevrolet there on the back, and there's your bed. Okay, so then we have this camper, which my cousins let me borrow. We have some stickers here. This says GVWR of 7,000 pounds, which is what your uh, wet weight is. And you have gross axle weight of 3,500 pounds. Let's see. I don't see a what it's gonna be as far as the dry weight. We can kind of figure, or figure this out, 7,000 pounds, GVWR fully loaded and 1,670 pounds of payload or cargo in the vehicle. So it makes the, if you do the math, which again, I'm not so good at math, but 1,600, so 5,400 pounds probably is our dry weight. With that, and that means without any cargo, without any water, anything in there. You can see it's a rather long camper and I'm going to Google this when I get home. I'll put some numbers down below as far as how long it is. And there we go. There's a long camper. So if you were to look back at things, you could see it right there. And I could sneak across now and give you a full visual view of both truck and camper together. Yeah. So, and again, I'm gonna check my backside. Here comes a car. Uh, um, you can see we have a, just a bit of squat, but not that bad. Not, not my headlights aren't coming off the road. My, my tires aren't like living off the side. Headlights aren't shining up so high. So this is, this is not bad. Um, I think if I did, when even, if I did even further, I'd probably put some helper bags in there and do something to distribute the weight a little bit better. Cause uh, this is probably the max I'd go with that kind of setup. But again, I mean, this is a very common thing to tow with a half ton. You know, if you want to go big max towing and go 13,000 pounds, do all this kind of stuff. Oh, well, you're looking at heavy duty anyways. Okay. I forgot to mention and show the diesel exhaust fluid gauge. There in the truck, I'm doing 45 miles an hour speed limit right through here. And uh, unfortunately, I can't tell you what, what, there's not a number. It just shows little lines. And one of the complaints on this diesel has been from customers like myself who bought, like I bought this for the year. Last year I had a Tundra, last year I had a Ford, next year I have a Ram, I just go through trucks. But a lot of customers have told me on the comments that their one complaint with this truck is that they tend to use quite a bit of diesel exhaust fluid when using this truck and it's a little annoying. So diesel exhaust fluid is about, I've been finding it 15 to 20 bucks a gallon or for a big jug of it, I should say. I think it's like two and a half gallons. And uh, you know, I have 3,400 miles on this truck. I did tow a little bit this winter for in, but nothing I filmed because it was snowing. It wasn't a great experience. Um, I had to run and get something for kind of emergency, but I did put some in. So they, General Motors tells me if you're towing a lot, you're going to lose a lot more def. If you're not towing that often, you won't use that much. And if you don't know what def is, it's sprayed in with the exhaust cycle or the yeah, exhaust cycle of the engine. And it what's meant to do is it takes the most harmful pollutants out of this diesel and takes it away before it goes out through the muffler. So that way we're not uh, spewing out more pollution in the environment, which is a good thing. However, I will tell you, it goes without saying, that this kind of stuff has made diesels pretty debatable and it's a hot topic for a lot of diesel owners. It's just, well, what it is. Let's go ahead and get up to speed here. So I put it in tow haul mode, which means I activated the exhaust brake. It's an integrated exhaust brake. And so when you're going downhill, it'll use the um, exhaust to help you slow down. It'll use the engine to help you slow down. Another way to say it. I'm gonna merge here a little bit. And the speed limit through here is 70. Like I said, I'm probably gonna go 65. I'm never in a hurry when I'm towing. Right now, the uh, transmission temperature is 180 degrees. Engine temperature is 208 degrees. And I've only gone not even a mile. Maybe I've gone, yeah, I've gone like not even a half mile. So let's go ahead and get down the road and give you some better numbers. Okay, the truck just downshifted two gears. I'm going up the front here of Wildcat Hills or the front or back, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put my camera kind of in its spot where I can drive and see it at the same time. Let's try it like that. Okay, so 199 degrees is the transmission temperature. Uh, the engine temperature is 221 and fuel economy is dropping because I am going up this hill. So I'm going to see what we look like when we get to the top of the hill. So we're going to make the turn here and we downshifted again. So I've downshifted now three times. RPMs at 2300 or 2500 RPMs. Maintaining 65 miles an hour. 
I have 203 degrees on a transmission temperature. Uh, downshifted again. So we're going, we're downshifting yet again, holding the gear. We're now at 3,100 RPMs. This is, uh, I believe it's a, a three quarter of a mile, maybe, mi maybe a mile long. Um, up, it's basically up to the top and then back down. It's nothing like Colorado where I'm going upside of a clip mountain or something. Um, but this is a pretty good hill and it's a pretty good hill for the area. And as you would have it, there's a small Toyota vehicle in front of me that I have to slow down for. <laughs> because this truck wants to go. So now I'm slowing down to 60, degree, 60 miles an hour. I've downshifted. Uh, I, I've downshifted now. Not, up, not upshifted, I should say. Or I, I've upshifted, I should say, to, to a higher gear. Upshifted. And now I'm at 20, like I said, 5, 2,500 RPMs. 203 degrees for transmission temperature. And I'll show you that on the screen. So there's that small Toyota taking its time. Uh, 203 degrees and yeah, now I'm doing 60, 62 and I'll start getting back 65 miles an hour and coming down this grade. So how this trip works is I'm at the 10 mile mark. Um, my goal is 50 miles. It seems like 50 miles is a pretty good number for towing. And we're gonna come down the mountain or down the hill. I call them hills or bluffs or whatever you wanna call them. And we'll come down into the valley and then we'll do the reverse and we'll go up the valley. So. Um, I'll show you on the screen here too. This is the, uh, there you go, there's the valley. We're going down the valley. And so again, it's going straight south. I'll turn around and go straight north. It's a sunny day. Um, right now it's about 77 degrees. It's the best day we've had in five months maybe. Um, so we're going down, doing about 65 now. I'm gonna tap on the brake for a second and hopefully the, the exhaust brake kicks in. Yeah, I dropped fast. I'm down to 60 miles an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and set cruise again to resume at 65. And we'll go down. So I, no white knuckles for me. I'm not holding white knuckles. Uh, transmission temperature has dropped down to 199 degrees and engine temperature is now at 212 degrees. What's interesting that, and let's see if I can't show this on screen, um, when, I get, when it gets close to the regen is that the banks I dash has reset now and it's saying that the DPF is actually 45 45% and DPS is off. So what's really fascinating to me about that is that the more we drove this camper home last night, because I brought up my cousin's house, uh, the more that DPF regen number went down. And so it seems like because you're towing, it makes sense the engine is working harder. If the engine is working harder and hotter, it's gonna burn off some of that soot that's in the DPF and these particular filters. So it's a filter that builds up soot and then it goes to regen where the engine heats up and burns all the soot off. So uh, it's interesting. I, I, yeah, I, and, but I, like I said, I've been told from General Motors that you should go through like one regen every fuel tank. And uh, people make a big deal about regen. Uh, the owners I've talked to and the times I've been driving this truck, I've never even noticed when it regen. It's just, it's a little process. It usually um, seems like it's pretty fast, but I, I've been wanting to get it on video. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my whole point of this long story. I want to get on video and I can't because it keeps going down in number. So it's like that issue. I want to record. I want to. I want to record it and talk about it, but I really don't have anything to say about it because I can't get it on camera and it keeps burning off the soot. So hopefully, uh, fingers crossed, I'll be able to talk about it and whether or not, well, it's even really an issue. Okay, I'm taking a turnaround spot and you can see it's kind of cool. The camera will show you on the screen when you have your blinker on, which way you have your blinker going. So it's kind of nice to see behind it. Um, because these mirrors aren't as great as other brands are as far as, I'd want to set a tow mirrors if I swing a lot with this truck. Just because I can't see a whole lot of the camper, i would be more comfortable if I had tow mirrors. You don't need them all the time, but they are kind of nice. So we have 207 degrees for the transmission. I have 219 for the engine. Again, 48% DPF, so it must be heating up a lot to get that. And then we have 10.3 miles drive as far as mile per gallon and 28.6 miles driven. So I think that's a pretty good number. I've been driving for 30, 30 minutes. Um, it handles the load pretty well. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of concerns. Agree agreeably, I've towed loads like this before. So we'll get up to speed. I'm gonna get up to about 65 again. I'm gonna set the cruise and just kind of cruise on down the road. So now I'm at 207 degrees. And oh, by the way, I was messing around with some things. Um, I did find how to show you the uh, transmission as far as what gear I'm in. So when we go back up Wildcat Hills, I will go ahead and put that in manual mode and I'll show you what gear we're gonna be in as we're going up and down. And I can use these um, 
the, the oh, I'm a lack for words today. The shifter is past the steering wheel. I will use those to shift a little bit. Paddle shifters, paddle shifters. Tim, they're paddle shifters. I can shift a little bit. I can show you the differences as far as RPMs going up the, the climb. Okay, now we're getting ready to go over Wildcat Hills yet again. So we went over it, drove 20 some miles out, and then we turn around, we have 45, 0.3 miles on the odometer, 11.2 mile per gallon. The transmission temperature is 203 degrees. Uh, what's interesting about transmission temperature is there's a lot of old school thinking versus new school thinking. Old school thinking was like, I think it was like 210, 215 was like max, that was it, that was it. And now these new synthetic uh, transmission fluids, uh, the oil, can withstand like, I, I think I read one, it was like 350 degrees, like this amazing amount of temperature. The only concern people have had since then is the seals on transmissions and inside the unit, whether the, the mechanicals inside the unit can withstand those temperatures. But it seems like it hasn't been a problem. And it seems like automakers are able to tow more because they're able to keep things cooler, which the transmission is part of that. As part of the SAE 2807 standard of keeping testing for max towing. So it downshifted, and so I'm going to take the transmission over here, the transmission shifter, and I'm going to flick it down. And this will show me we're in sixth gear, and it just shifted down again. So I'm going to shift up and get the seventh gear, and that's 2000 RPMs. Okay, so then I'm going to put it back in drive and let it do its thing. So Interestingly enough, the Ford M50 power boost I had locked out the top two, two gears in towing, would not let you get into 10th gear, limited 8th gear. So the automakers have different viewpoints on that apparently. Um, so now we're in 6th gear, downshifted down to 6th gear from 10th gear. So now we're really getting down. And coming up the hill, I'm at 203 degrees on transmission temperature, 223 for the engine temperature. And we're getting to the top of the hill. Plenty of power. I've never had a problem with power. The low end torque in this truck. Man, it's so cool when it downshifts. I mean, it's just you have so much torque. It feels like it can go a lot faster than that I'm going, and you probably can. I just, again, I just try to keep these consistent. If you've watched the channel last year, you know I did a massive towing test with a 5.7 liter V8. I did a 3.5 liter, like a V6, uh, EcoBoost kind of engine. I did a hybrid, and I did the diesel generation before this. It's an hour long video. I broke it into chapters. Check it out above. Like 200 and some thousand people have already watched the video, and I hope you find it useful because it's got everything. I've, I did the same test, the same camper, the same trip, the same everything as best I could, and did the best job I could get the video out to you guys. So hopefully that, that's very helpful. And we're nearing the top, 11.1 mile per gallon still, and we are at the top, and it's 205 degrees for the transmission temperature, which is really nothing and it's 76 degrees on my on the screen here i think that was today's high was 76 and 66 miles an hour and we'll go down the hill and this should use the exhaust brake plus it may downshift let's see uh we're at about 1200 rpms i'll get this on the camera for you guys oh and uh go ahead it goes without saying I'm professional. Don't do this at home. I've done this a lot. This is uh, secondhand for me after a while. So, and I've learned to get used to it. So don't camera and film while you're driving, please. All right, so we're doing 66 miles per hour, 1200 RPMs. This is the big corner down here. See, this corner is a big, is a big tight corner. I'm, my foot's on the brake. I'm gonna hover my foot because, yeah, it's like, come on, slow down, slow down. Okay. Now it down, now it downshift a little bit. Exhaust brake kicked on. Yeah. No. No, that gets a failing grade for me. I would have liked that to kick on. I liked that the, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's me being nervous, but you know, when you make that corner at speed in this size of camper, this length with that height, that side profile, that's a lot of push. That's a lot of oversteer that could push me sideways into the lane and that's not cool so not a fan of that i wish it would have braked i wish the exhaust brake would have worked a little better and i wish it would have held that a little better and i think i've heard that from you guys online where you're you wish the exhaust brake in this truck was a little bit stronger like you like towing experience but you wish the exhaust brake would kick in a little bit um faster and more aggressively uh, that's kind of my two cents there so 198 degrees and uh dpf <laughs> dpf regen number is 51 and regen is off I don't know how the hell I'm ever going to get regen to work, but whatever. So I'm going to head back to the uh, 
gas station and put some diesel in this will calculate the mile per gallon that I got on the screen versus what I get at the pump and it's the same pump I used earlier and then we'll look at the oil and then we'll look at the depth okay I actually let this thing sit overnight again because I figured I'm gonna edit the video today anyways so let's just let it sit and I'll check the oil now that it sat all overnight so we only went 50 miles, so I don't expect any change here to happen. And what I expect to happen is if you're towing a lot, like a lot of distances, you may get excessive um, usage. I don't even measure this. This is, this is right at the, the line there again. So I did not use any oil driving that 50 miles. So yeah. So, you know, again, it's, it's one of those situations where, you know, if you, if you off-road aggressively, if you drive aggressively, and if you tow a lot, you're probably going to use more oil than, well, if you didn't do those things. But I don't know if it's, uh, I don't know if it's the end of the world. But I can see people who tow a lot seeing this as a frustration. For me, uh, 100 miles, no oil usage. Okay, we got to the gas station. I just finished filling up. And so I put in uh, some diesel. I let it set for about 20 seconds, let it, because it foams up, add a little bit more, topped it off as best I could because diesel, you know, you, you can hear it filling up. Um, people always ask me about diesel, if it's dirty, if it's smelly. Yeah, that's why I carry gloves. Um, depends, there are some clean pumps, but most pumps, like this is a truck station, um, I'm bringing my gloves up. And I'm telling you, that diesel smell stays in your fingers for hours. I know that. I filled up in Omaha one time and for hours I was like, it was crazy. All right, let's get to the, the meat of the matter here. So I have 61.6 .6 miles driven, 11.9 mile per gallon, and I still have a transmission temperature of 198 degrees. And so I had put in some diesel fuel. I put in, uh, let's see, five gallons at 439 a gallon. So if we take 61.6, uh, divided by 5.81 or 841. <laughs> uh, let's see. 60, 61 points. I'm a journalist. That's why I don't do math. Um, I'm not, not the most math guy. 5.841. I try, though. I try hard. I have it at 10.5 mile per gallon, and this thing says 11.9 mile per gallon. So I'm going to chalk that up to the differences of fuel pumps, diesel, like I said, I've had a lot of problems getting accurate information from diesel pumps. But yeah, so 11.9 uh, on the computer, 10.5 on hand calculation. What about that depth, that diesel exhaust fluid that's a bane of everybody's existence. People hate it and they want to delete their vehicles and they want to get rid of it. Well, here's what we got. I used one bar of depth. So I don't know what that translates to because GM doesn't tell me. But I didn't use like a bunch of it. I used some. Um, I don't know. It's to me, it's personal opinion. Do you think you know? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bars. I used one bar doing a 160 mile drive. Some people are going to call that excessive. Some people are going to call it eh, whatever. Uh, I, last time I bought Def, I was like 20 bucks for a big jug. Mostly filled up the truck. Used uh, I think it's two point. I think this Def is about three to. Four three and a half gallons and that I bought a two and a half gallon container. So as far as what holds in a truck. So yeah, I didn't have a problem with that. Um, as far as range, 373 miles, a lot of people have concerns with this truck because it's got a 24 gallon gas tank and a uh, well, diesel tank, I should say fuel tank. And um, it does, it's not always enough if you're doing a lot of long distance driving and long, long distance towing. I can see people having a problem with that. But yeah, overall smooth, uh, quiet, powerful. You know, offline torque is amazing. This gets most of its max torque at a very low RPM and it makes it really great offline and it was nice, easy to drive, handle the trailer just fine, trailer brakes were fine. I mean, I didn't have any other problems with this truck. So there you go. There's my thoughts on this. You can check a bunch of videos on this, on this channel on this truck this year. The next year we'll do something different because that's how things work. It's always a fun time. For more check the videos over here, website down below, pickuptrucktalk.com. A lot more details over there as well. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.